Hi, everyone, and welcome back. I'm John Linkove. I'm Ryan Pizlikowski. And I'm Mike Monticello. And again, I'm John, nice to meet you. <laughs> hey, you guys hey, look nice different. Good to meet you. You, guys you guys look different than on Di- camera. Yeah, you know, Real life. that ruddiness and stuff like that, you know, bad, bad beard. Yeah, so you, as you could tell, we are back in the studio. We're uh, back, baby! Yes, 18 plus months later. Um, wow. We're, we're sitting next to each other. This will be in flux and new. Some episodes might be here with three people. Some might be some kind of hybrid. Maybe one person will be like a, a computer screen here. You know, we'll talk to the <laughs> to Max Headroom of, of Autotest. But we're making it a go with it. So enough <clears throat> of that. We're back, B. We're back. We're Let's back. dive in. Sure. All right. Let's get to it. So this week, first car that we're going to talk about, the car we're going to talk about, the Ford Maverick Hybrid. Everyone's been asking about this. This has been the 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 trucklet, the the car based truck, the affordable vehicle that 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 people have been asking for. No more F one fifties, right? No more giant trucks. It's all about small car based. I don't know about that. All right, all right. All right. Well, for some people, the, the the interesting thing is that this is the entry level truck for the Maverick line. Um, but even though it starts at nineteen thousand nine ninety five, our truck is a little more. We bought the Lariat version. Um, we were lucky to even get one. So we, that's how, point. that's how we ended up with Alaria, I think was like, we, we just grabbed what we could at that point. Cause they were, they were so far out. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah so true. it's a trim higher than what we got for, yep. you know, we had an XL, we have an XLT for the turbo, right. Um, Maverick and this one's, uh, the Lariat. So it's a, a, it's a little bit nicer. Trim. Right. Yeah. So and that was one of the things we talked about with the, the regular, uh, the, the XLT kind of iffy yeah. as far as the, the, the materials and such. Right. Um, so this one only the hybrid only comes front wheel drive, powered by 191 horsepower, 2.5 liter four cylinder engine, hybrid and hybrid power, power powertrain with a continuously variable transmission. Um, EPA rates it at 37 miles per gallon combined. You're not seeing that in even diesel pickup trucks. No. Um, but anyway, while it starts at 19,995, um, our Lariat came out at 25,860 for that trim and total with options. Big thirty-two thousand nine twenty-five, including the one thousand four hundred ninety-five dollar destination fee, Monty. That's the bane of your existence. <laughs> having written that story on yeah. it, yeah, way it's too am- expensive. For that's that. a lot of money. It's amazing how fast you go from a base price to ten, fifteen over that. Right, <laughs> it's like it's insane. Right, <laughs> you know uh, what bothers me about that uh, destination charge, and not to harp on the destination charge. Go ahead, go ahead. But when you talk to the automakers, they say, "Well, it's because people are buying so many big SUVs and pickups." Well, okay. This might be a pickup, right? But it's a tiny pickup. So why is it still the same right. high price that they're charging, you know, for pickups? So it's really kind of tells you that the destination charge is a little, um, um, you know, maybe gaining a little extra cash there yeah. without uh, having to put it into the base price, right. fattening the wallet, so exactly. to speak. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and it's not always clear. Like, I mean, we're, we'll get to the car, but it's yeah. not even clear about what included. I've had people yeah. ask me about. The dealer said they're charging me for fuel because gas is so expensive. Like that's supposed to be in the destination charge yeah. and. Anyway, so anyway, um, but the big thing about this fuel economy and trucks, it's and it, it's all about the hybrid powertrain. Yep. Um, Ryan, tell us tell us a little bit about your experience with it because, I mean, you're both truck guys. I haven't driven it. You guys are going to tell me about it, yep. but it, it has some pros and cons. Yeah. So I I mean, uh, to be quite honest, I'm embarrassed to admit this. When I first got in it, I didn't realize it was only front wheel drive. Mm. I did not know that. Um, and then he floored it and he the front tires. <laughs> no, well, I did. I was actually um, in, the, in my back lot, and I was. It was like a. There's a hill there, some dirt, and I actually since since the you know the front wheel spun, and I was done to me like, oh, this is only front wheel drive. And then further research, you can only get it that way. I didn't realize that. But um, to me, that's a huge hindrance here. Aside from that, it's fantastic. I, I mean, it's a, I think it's a better. It's a nicer driving version than the um, the two point five all wheel drive version we have in the, the XLT. Turbo. Yeah, the yeah. turbo. I think it's um, a two liter. It's a two liter turbo. Two liter turbo. Li- two yeah. liter turbo. Yep. I'm wrong again. That's okay. <laughs> Unbelievable. But it's got all wheel drive. We got yeah, that, right? so it's got all wheel drive, right? But um, just and I bring up that front wheel drive thing because I, I'm, I tow stuff. You you know you put stuff in the bed up a little hill. You're spinning tires. You, you, even if you had a little boat, I mean it tows. I think it tows two thousand pounds. Right. If you even if you wanted to tow a little boat up a around here, our boat ramps are slimy and yes. gross. Yes. You're not going to get out. You're going to. I, I think you're going to be struggling, and that's a, a virtue of a truck that has four wheel or all wheel drive, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's a big uh, big thing to me. But as far as driving it as a regular car and having a bed if, for maybe like a more urban area where you're you know you're not maybe going off road or doing any of that stuff, it's fantastic. I mean, it it does a, a good job at that, you know. So. 
the, it's, it's a it's a big caveat to not have that I, all wheel drive. I think but. It fixes some of the issues we had with the uh, with the two liter turbo, mm -hmm. right? Which is because that has a regular transmission, regular automatic transmission. This has a continuously variable transmission. One of the things we noticed was that Maverick wants to get into as tall of a gear as possible for fuel economy. Uh, and then it ends up in this 1300 to 1500 RPM zone where it feels like the engine is lugging mm -hmm. and there's this vibration coming into the cabin. And then so you either have to hit the gas pedal a little harder to get it to right. you know, downshift or eventually it figures it out and does it on its own. Well, this, this one has none of that, right? So, uh, but, so it, it cures that part of it. And I will say, I thought, so I was a little different. I knew that it was front wheel drive only, mm -hmm. but I also thought 191 horsepower, the base, base powertrain, this right. is going to be kind of a dog. And, and honestly, I don't know why dog is a, a is a, a derogatory thing. But anyway. Um, <laughs> it's like a sleepy kid. Yeah. A Let's call it. It's, a, sleepy, sleepy it's like a sleepy kid. A lazy dog. And so, yeah. so, but it's actually feels pretty good. Yeah. I mean, it's got decent, mm -hmm. you know, decent enough passing power. It's not like yeah. you feel like it has way less power than the the turbo maverick so i was impressed with that but but you still have a continuously variable transmission mm -hmm. right and so this has the downsides of the continuously variable transmission cbts that we've been talking about for a long time which is uh most of the time it does a great job of keeping the rpms really low mm -hmm. and none of this lugging stuff none of this vibration stuff but when you need to you know really say pass somebody accelerate onto the freeway or when you're just going up say a long grade yeah it's going to have those moments where the revs are being held really high the engine flares engine flares uh and it you know gives this sort of droning sensation and, and it it's where the acceleration when you're accelerating the rpms are higher than seem discordant with your actual you know the revs are higher than what it seems like you're accelerating sure. right? yeah. yeah so it still has those cbt foibles we we've this is not one of the best CBTs out there where right. it has the simulated shifts. This doesn't do that. And also it, it has a different rear suspension. Mm -hmm. These these ones come with a you know twist beam, non-independent rear suspension. Yep. And what, it's, a solid, it's, like a, it's a like a solid beam. Right. Like, yeah. Instead yeah, of being yeah. independent. So what I noticed was a, a combination of 18 inch wheels and tires on this one instead of, which is because of the Lariat trim, mm -hmm, okay, mm -hmm. versus 17s on our Turbo Maverick, which is the XLT, XLT. and the non independent rear suspension. One of the things we really liked about the Maverick was it's pretty civilized. It has a pretty civilized ride. This one, you feel, it feels a lot more like a regular pickup from that perspective. So you lose that as it's not as comfortable of a ride. I think it still handles almost the same. It, yeah. It'll be interesting if, if, is this like a regular pickup? A regular pickup, um, a truck-based one, or you know, uh, body on frame, where the bed makes a big difference if you're carrying something. Yeah. You know, is it going to settle the ride versus right. that that other one? Right. And, you know, I, I want to touch on two thousand pound towing capacity for this. Four thousand is the max for the turbo engine. Right. I, 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 I have a hard time with people who's like, oh, these are great dump cars. I mean, a thirty-two thousand vehicle dollar vehicle, even if it was a twenty-five thousand dollar vehicle. To use as a dump run vehicle, you know, <laughs> I mean, you as know, its sole purpose, you as it's, as it's, you know, it's, it's, it's like, well, what do you, what do you, how much money do you have in making these grand assumptions that these are perfect for going to the train and going to the dump and that's what you're using your vehicle right. for, but is, is, does it mean that pickups could be the new SUV? Could, could small pickups like this replace SUVs or are they still too limited with the bed and, yeah, and such? Yeah. I mean, I, they've, people have already done that with the full size. I mean, our, our F-150s or any of the trucks that we've tested, you know, when they're big four doors like yeah. that, the back seat is enormous. The new Tundra, tons of room. Um, and that makes, to, to me, perfect sense. It's, you know, and it tows a lot. It's more of a multi-purpose vehicle. But it's a pain in the neck in town, it's, right? It, it is. Stuff. It is. This is awesome with the visibility and right. the ability to park. So, yeah, I mean, it's 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 it comes down to your needs, I suppose. I mean, I... I would never, I mean, I, that doesn't suit me, but, sure. um, you know, I, when, while I had it, I went, I brought some stuff to the dump. I, you know, it was good to just throw stuff in the bed, but, um, if you need just like to your point, if you need just a dump run, you're better off buying a junk old little truck and leaving it in your yard and yeah. you registering it on a minimum, you know, insurance and just use it when you need to, if that's, you know, if you have other cars to do the, the other things, but um, I, th I think that, you know, it's say this is that time of the year where you go at, you know, to, uh, you know, the hardware store or whatever your outdoor store and you get, you know, mulch, right? So it's great for stuff like that. When mm -hmm. you want to throw bags of mulch or, or whatever, you just throw them right in the pickup bed. And that's great for things like that. Um, and of course, yeah, you can, you know, do, bring your garbage to the dump or whatever and not have to worry about doing anything with the inside of the car. Uh, and you're looking at what close to around 10 miles per gallon, according to the EPA, you know, better fuel economy. Sure. Right. And the low entry price, 
It's still much lower than a big full size right. truck, so, I even mean, the, used. Those, those are some of the real benefits to this. Yes. And so, yeah, this is not a vehicle you're going to take off road. Okay, it's front wheel drive, as you said. It's mm -hmm. it, you can't even get it in all wheel drive. Don't even think about you know a low range, right? So this is not right. you know what normal pickups we think of. You can take them off road. They're really burly. This is not that at all. This, this is a car. And a there are some other downsides. You know, I was talking about some downsides. Well, you know, it's a hybrid, and there's been some issues. Uh, we've noticed some hybrids don't have you know as linear of brakes as regular cars. Yeah. This one has some of those same issues. Low speed brake. Low speed braking yeah. can get grabby, or when yeah. the regen starts hitting in, and it feels a little weird. And so these are just things that you're going to have to learn to put up with and, and learn to kind of change your you're gonna have to work a little harder at modulating the brakes to have it stop exactly where you want these Absolutely. are some of the things with the hybrid right you know the one thing we talked you you guys are talking about i mean i was just listening and learning um about the way the powertrain fills in are, are hybrids almost perfect now versus when they were introduced and are they almost being overshadowed now by the push to evs i mean because much like the Ford Escape Hybrid, okay? The basic Escape was annoying. Mm -hmm. had, it, you know, it, 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 the engine would rev. You, you know, you, you had that power fill-in need or such. Mm -hmm. The Hybrid got rid of that. Right. You know, we look at Hyundais uh, and uh, the Hyundai Tucson, the Hyundai Santa Fe, the Hyundai Elantra. All of the hybrid versions are better. Yeah, they're scoring what, better in our, in our test. They're just more livable. Yeah. And right. you get the mileage. Right. I, it's, this isn't the day of the Honda Accord Hybrid when it first came out where they say, like, it's the performance one. You're like, eh. All that money for what? Yeah. It's not really faster and it's not really great mileage. Is, is this the era that hybrids should be shining? They make the most sense right now, if you ask me. They do. They make a ton of sense. Yeah. Uh, and I think the difference with this one is that there are some things that you do, you know, put up with for it being a hybrid, but mm -hmm. it's hard to overlook that fuel economy. It's really hard to overlook that fuel economy gain. And this is the first pickup truck to ever come standard with a hybrid powertrain. That's right. unheard of, right? Yeah. So I think that we're getting to that point. And it's kind of a shame. You said, so we're moving, it seems like the industry is moving to EVs just as all these hybrids. Because at right. first hybrids, there were, you know, the braking issues I talk about were far worse than right. what this Maverick has. This is just a little bit of non-linearity in the braking. Um, Sometimes it felt like you had a hockey puck between the, the you know, the rotor yeah. and the caliper and you were, and the CBTs, yeah, like spongy, and the CBTs yeah. are getting better. You know, this is yeah. not one of the best, but it's pretty good and mm -hmm. certainly better than the early ones. So yeah, they're getting so good, filling in those holes. And that's exactly what this thing does. With the electric drive, it's filling in the, the holes and getting rid of the lugginess uh, vibrations of the turbo Maverick. So I mean, yeah, it's definitely has some improvements, but in this case, you also have some some drawbacks with the front wheel drive only, 2,000 pound towing capacity, and of course, you have a tiny bed. No matter which Maverick you buy, it's a tiny bed. Sure, sure. Would it be a take it to the mountain bike trail, throw the throw the mat over the back, and uh, you know, so you wouldn't go too not? deep. You're not, you're not going. Yeah, well, deep. yeah, you can get to the trailhead. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah, and you'd want one of those tailgate mats for sure because right. uh, the bed is just uh, you're not going to be able to throw you know bikes really in the back very right. easily. You know, yeah, so. cool. So go to consumerreports.org for more information. Uh, our first drive on the Maverick Hybrid, as well as our test results for the Maverick XLT Turbo that we tested. Um, with that, we're going to move to our next section, which comes from content that you send us. So email us questions, video questions. Text talkingcars at iCloud.com. That's talkingcars at iCloud.com. Send them in. Um, you know, we, we, we want a varied selection of questions from you, our, our audience. That brings us to Kurt's question, who says, I need a lesson for physics dummies. Please explain how coasting and braking charges the battery in a hybrid or electric vehicle. I know how brakes work and that they create heat due to friction. But how is that captured and used to charge the battery? So we have an answer, and then uh, Ryan's going to give it to us, and then Monty and I are going to fill in with some lame, lame <laughs> comments. So Ryan, tell us about the answer to Kurt's question. So yeah, he's 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 right about the um, you know a traditional car with regular brakes. You step on a brake pedal, it squeezes a um, the caliper squeezes the rotor that's attached to your wheel, and you creates um, you get heat out of that because that's wasted energy. Conservation of uh, energy, one of the laws, uh, energy cannot be it cannot be created or destroyed, only transformed into something else. So that's what we're doing there. We're transforming the energy of your car, slowing down into heat, and then it's just wasted energy, unfortunately. Electric motors or EVs, you know, EVs or hybrids that have an electric motor inside of them, actually use 
the power. So when you're you're on the accelerator, you're driving. You're putting power from your battery is going to the um, to, to the electric motor. Mm -hmm. To your wheels is pushing you along. When you lift off, now you're coasting, and the motor, the, your wheel is still attached to that um, electric motor through the through the you know drivetrain, and spinning that back. And it basically in reverse, putting energy back into the battery. But you're slowing down because you're fighting the um, the force energy it takes to turn that electric motor, which mm -hmm. creates that electricity. So it's just kind of, and it's it's mu it's more in depth than that nowadays. I mean, the technology that the the in the things that they're doing to maximize all that stuff, it's very um, it's not as rudimentary as I just said. You're not just going backwards in power. But, but it's basically it's basically if you think of it that your electric motor is powering mm -hmm. the wheels. Mm -hmm. To accelerate, right. spinning now, one direction. Right now, the wheels are powering the electric motor <laughs> right. uh, to to uh, capture this energy back. You know, to right. the so battery. When the, right. When the energy, yeah. So when the, when the energy at the wheel and goes back into the motor is greater than the power, the, the energy that was being put to the motor from the battery side, which is going to be none because you're off the throttle. It re reverses the poles and it sends it back into the battery. Right. So and there's controllers in there that are controlling how this is going. And, you know, like a hybrid car, you have the gas motors involved too, charging the um, battery mm -hmm. too. So there's a whole, um, and you can, to all of that, but depending on the vehicle, you could choose the amount how aggressive the regeneration is. Right. So then there's all of that. I mean, you can, some of these new ones you can turn off completely. Like so you feel like a normal car, just coast, yeah. or you can make it real aggressive. So you drive with just one pedal. That's what one pedal drive is. Um, so you're, the brake pedal essentially is kind of built into that um, gas pedal in a sense. By lifting. But if you need to stop an emergency stop, you have to step on the brake pedal and it will use some regen braking, but it will, all, it'll go to your uh, calipers. You still have calipers, um, regular traditional brakes, you, if, if you will, on a hybrid or an EV, because when you need to stop, stop, that's when that comes right. in. But so. the uh, distance cruise control, dis distance sensing, um, uh, adaptive cruise control, mm -hmm. uh, often in hybrids and electrics, use that as a way of slowing the vehicle versus oh, sure, braking, yeah. you know, so they're yep. capturing the energy there. Right. Um, but in general sense, motor spins one way, Mm -hmm. Motor spins the other way. And it's all It'll, about capturing that heat that otherwise would just be wasted and go into the environment. Yeah, well, it's right? not even heat. It's just going back into the, 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 that torque from the wheels, just going back into the electric motor. There's no heat. The heat is, is wasted, wasted, right? So, I mean, there is some heat involved, but right, right, it's right. very minimal. It's not as if it's mm -hmm. sucking the heat in to turn the motor. Yes. Right, yeah. And that's kind of the way the question was written. And that's not the case. It, it's, you're, we're creating electricity through the, the, the same, very, very same electric motor that is pushing you. It's right. very, kind of a genius thing because it's just, the same thing. Mm -hmm. You don't you have to have now a generator there too. I mean, that's essentially what an electric motor and a generator are very similar. Yeah. Um, they're just in terms of which way the current is going. Well, Kurt, hope that answers your question. And that's going to do it for this episode. We are really happy to be back uh, here in person. It's It's been a long time coming. Remember, send us your questions, talkingcars at iCloud.com. That way, three other people sitting at this table can answer your questions. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next episode.